All right, let's talk about managing uh, urinary diversion systems. So what we have here is this uh, person who has a plumbing problem. They may be creating urine, their kidneys are fine, however, the excretion of that urine, um, you know, the whole system is broken in one place or the other. Some of the risk factors for needing a urinary diversion would be, say, a birth defect, uh, cancer. In fact, I have had several patients who have had cervical cancer, maybe even colon um, cancer, and they need a place for the urine to divert because cancer was all um, surrounding and invading the tissues that normally would, you know, excrete the urine. But um, uh, trauma, trauma would uh, require you to have a urinary diversion and just general disease of the urinary system, such as if you had too many kidney stones or too many prostate, um, you know, uh, frequencies of obstruction, they would go ahead and, you know, instead of straight cathing you all the time, would put in a urostomy. There is a couple of different diversions that you can place. Uh, I believe a few slides forward are going to um, describe that to you, but what you see in the pictures here under risk factors of recognition is a uh, nephrostomy tube. <clears throat> and so this is a tube that goes directly through the skin into the back uh, of the patient, uh, directly into the kidney, so the urine exits that way instead of going down into the urineers, into the bladder or the urethra. So how do you know if somebody uh, needs a urinary diversion? Well, they have kidney failure evidenced by their blood screening. In fact, you would usually do what we call a BUN, blood urea nitrogen level on them, and a creatinine. Creatinine is a byproduct of muscle action and metabolic um, you know, processes and the kidneys, normal healthy kidneys, actually excrete the creatinine, but in diseased kidneys, it actually retains, it's unable to excrete the creatinine. So we can actually measure how somebody's kidneys are doing by looking at their creatinine level. The BUN, the blood urea nitrogen, is also another way to see how well the body is peeing out the urea and the nitrogen. And if it's not, if it's not working, can then tell that the kidneys have a problem. There's a few different reasons why you would have a high BUN and a high creatinine other than kidney disease, but um, we're gonna use you know those two lab values just for uh, the purpose of saying the kidneys have failed. Like if you're dehydrated, it would one of those levels would go up, or if you had a really bad imbalance of uh, protein intake, like too much, your nitrogenous waste one would go up, but we're talking about kidney failures today. Uh, anyway, so little to no urine output. Uh, we would have somebody start to swell up. All of the water's gotta go somewhere and it goes into the tissues whenever it can't go elsewhere. So somebody will start having facial edema, arm edema, fingers, hands. They'll say that their rings don't fit anymore. Uh, their shoes are too tight. So edema will be everywhere. Um, they can also develop urinary uh, problems through having the kidney stones I mentioned. You can see it on CT, MRI. Then we need a you know urinary diversion. Also on an ultrasound, that's what U slash S means, ultrasound, we'll see hydronephrosis. This means water on the kidneys or you know urine is um, you know backed up. Gotta go out, gotta get out some way, somehow. Um, so the complications of having um, a urinary diversion is hydronephrosis. Wait a second, how would hydronephrosis be the complication if it's also the problem? Well, if you only have one way for urine to get out and say it's your tube and it's occluded, maybe it has junk in it, um, protein, you know, uh, maybe they have a UTI so it's kind of chunky, but you can actually also cause hydronephrosis by fixing somebody's hydronephrosis. So uh, that is a real complication. Infections, uh, anytime there is a uh, surgically, you know, uh, surgical, surgically made hole in somebody, you're at risk for infection. Psychologically, this is really, really challenging. We sort of mentioned the sexual aspects of it, but just, you know, going out to eat with friends and knowing that um, you are currently urinating through an ostomy bag worn, um, you know, under your shirt. 
you uh, want to teach patients how to wear certain articles of clothing to disguise and hide uh, some of these uh, appliances underneath the gown, uh, gown, underneath their shirts, like an empire wasted top that flows. Uh, the attitude of the healthcare worker is extremely important because you will notice that, um, unfortunately, a lot of people are not uh, trained or don't remember how to properly care for one. So they will apply the device in, uh, incorrectly or they will empty it infrequently and the person will have what we call blowouts, which is where the device pops off. Um, also, just their facial expressions are not uh, under check and control. So they'll be you know, making faces as they're dealing with something. I mean, nobody wants to have a nurse working for them that's like, like this, it's disgusting. No, it's not, it's just a diversion device. It happened to you. Um, slide 23, please. Uh, here we have an example of two ostomy devices. One is a little bit more of a, um, what's the word for it? The, the stoma has the correct, um, not inversion, extraversion, I guess. Um, it's, this is the one on the left. It's kind of you know, pooching, the intestines flipped out. As you can see, it's actively making urine. There's urine streaming down the body. This looks like it's for a kidney removal. Now, the orientation, if I had to guess, the belly button on the left is the top part of the person, and as you move uh, to the right of the picture, that's their pelvic area, which is well-shaved, so that's why there's no pubic hair. But it looks like they uh, took out a kidney here or even replaced the kidney. They even have a drain hanging on the left. But we don't want to measure the, um, the peri area because on the right, this can happen. The stoma is actually a little bit more on the inside. It's kind of an inverted stoma. And this happens whenever it's not just tacked down uh, correctly or the surgeon makes it at the flush with the skin. It's supposed to kind of pooch out, flip out some. Um, but here we have uh, trouble for the nurse because the stoma has to be cut just right to allow that skin to heal. So you don't want the you know, how do I describe this? If you have the stoma, you want it, the ostomy device to fit perfectly around it, not too big, because then that peri area begins to get excoriated, like as you see in that picture on the right. Um, or if it's too small, the urine will get under the wafer and the applicant and, and the device, the urinary diversion you know pouch and it will cause a larger area of excoriation in the device to malfunction so it has to be just right this is a situation where we would call an ostomy nurse who has uh, lots of resources and training and she can train you uh, how to apply and troubleshoot a device like this that person can looks like had multiple surgeries as you can see evident you know this is evidenced by the um, large um, scar down the middle of the abdomen it's quite a large scar. Wide, I mean. So keep the skin clean, keep it dry. Um, a lot of times you can apply barrier ointment. Um, not ointment, it's like a pad that you paint on somebody before you apply the sticky ostomy device. It helps keep the skin intact as well. All right, assessing urine. This is uh, slide 24. Monitor ins and outs. Can a tech monitor ins and outs? Hmm. CNA, a tech, whoever. <gasps> yes, yes, actually they can. And the reason being is they are just collecting data. They are not assessing the data. They are just gathering the numbers for you, such as they would be, um, you know, gathering uh, vital signs or blood pressure. This is within their scope of practice, but it's your job to read the numbers, interpret the numbers, and to communicate a problem to the physician or provider. Um, <clears throat> As you see in the upper right hand portion of the slide, I don't know why I'm leaning so far forward. Like you really need that close up of my face. Um, but in the right hand side, this is how you would collect a you know, freshly voided specimen. If some doctor wanted like a um, mm, like a sodium or urine protein, it doesn't necessarily need to be sterile, but we call that a hat. Um, <laughs> Don't ask me why, I'm just telling you the facts. 
but they called us a hat and um, you would put the patient's name on it, date, uh, time of collection once you've collected the sample. Um, you would transfer the urine into hat and pour it into a little specimen cup. Now, if you need a urine sample, such as a urinalysis, uh, or to perform a urinalysis, the doctor would say, give me a clean catch. And what this means is that you actually have the patient clean the perineum, male and female, and they pee a little bit. This actually washes all of the film of bacteria that's on the meatus away. And you could, uh, take the little cup and you catch the middle of the stream. So not the first pee, not the very end of the pee, you catch the middle piece of the pee. And that's the um, middle part of the stream, I should say. That is the most accurate way to collect a sample. And then you, you know, clean with a little peri wipe afterward. So wipe before, pee a little bit, get your cup in there, <laughs> got it, <laughs> pull out and let them continue pee, and then you wipe the remaining of urine after them. But that's very important. Uh, a lot of times we just give the cup to the patient and say, give me a urine sample, and they don't understand we want a midstream. That is the only acceptable way to collect a uh, clean catch. Now, they may not want a clean catch. They may want a sterile urine specimen. This is only uh, completed by going in with a urinary catheter. You know, your sterile, you clean it with the betadine wipes, you know, collect your urine, and then you pull out. And there's no first part of the urine or last part of the stream. You're going into the bladder, so there's no stream to collect. But that's called a sterile specimen. Um, then we've got the 24-hour specimen. This is when the doctor is trying to figure out in a 24-hour period how much urine you're producing, how much protein is in there, how much creatinine is not being processed by your kidneys and it's showing up in your bloodstream. And they do this little comparison of uh, how good your kidneys are or are not doing. But that urine is a very, um, there's a very specific way to collect this urine. You say, okay, 10 o'clock, pee. And the patient pees, you discard that one, don't keep it. And then the next one, you know, 10.30 when they pee again, you count that one all the way up until 10 o'clock the next day. The big catch here is that you discard the first pee after your um, you know, designated time. Uh, what happens if a tech throws your pee away accidentally? Ooh, I didn't know you were collecting a 24 hour urine. There was no sign, you forgot to put one. What do you have to do? You start all over again and have to explain yourself. <laughs> Why? All right, patient, so about that uh, urine sample I was trying to catch on you, yeah, we have to start over. So put signs up, communicate to your techs and to the rest of the healthcare team that are taking care of this patient. Don't throw my pee away, all right? Keep it. Um, all right, that's it for that one. Oh, and you have to keep the pee on ice. Yeah, keep the pee on ice, please. That can be something your tech can do to you know, continue to monitor that and get new ice. <laughs> Crushed or cubed? <laughs> All right, here's a clicker question, uh, slide 25. Which statement from the nurse is incorrect? This catheter is to help with your urinary retention treat your problem of leaking urine, obtain a clear, uh, sorry, obtain a clean urine specimen, measure the amount of urine left in your bladder uh, post-void. Post mm. Which one is incorrect? So three statements are true. Did you say a, C, and D are correct, and B is incorrect? I hope so, because it is true. A catheter does help with urinary retention, true. Uh, a catheter is used to obtain a, wait a second, you know, looking at this now, B uh, is also incorrect. Ah because um, if you're on the same page with me, a catheter is to obtain a sterile urine specimen. Uh, B is also incorrect 
It's to treat your problem of urinary, uh, you know, leaking urine. No, that's not what catheters are for. That's not the purpose of them. Uh, back in the old days, yes. Now, no. Measure the amount of urine left in your bladder uh, post-void. Yep, yeah, do that too.